Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I'm happy because I'm off on my summer travels getting to explore another little bit of the world. And I'm very pleased that storyteller Peter Chand has got a lovely story for us this week from India, all about a little cockerel. So get ready to do some crowing. India is a country which is surrounded by water on three sides and it's got the world's highest mountain range. Its two main languages are English and Hindi, but it has 21 other languages too. India is a very spiritual country. The sun god, which is featured in this story, is a Hindu god. He is pretty powerful and sometimes he rides a chariot. I wonder if you can have a think about how many different countries you know while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. And now, here's a word from our sponsors. When I was 16, I went to live in another country with a new family on a cultural exchange for a year. That experience sparked a lifelong interest in other cultures, which has had a lasting impact and helped make me who I am today. Thanks to kid culture, kids don't have to travel thousands of miles to learn about other people and cultures. Kid culture are on a mission to help kids build cultural awareness and character traits to thrive in our diverse world. And they've launched a new online cultural awareness course. Kid Culture's course has activities, games and videos made by kids across the world. It's filled with authentic local stories and perspectives kids can enjoy from home. Kid Culture. Cultural education for kids. Like me, your kids can experience the lasting impact of cultural education. Buy Kid Culture's cultural awareness course for your kid today. Go to kidculture.org forward slash super to get the course for up to 50% off for a limited time only. That's kidculture.org forward slash super. Hello, super great kids. I'm back. I wonder how many countries you thought of. I thought of Ireland, Japan, Argentina, Jamaica, Germany, the United States, Ukraine, Spain, China, Haiti, Finland and Kenya, and Canada, and Australia, and of course India, where our story this week is from. (gasps) There are so many more. Do you know how many countries there are in total in the world? Well, there are about 195 countries in total. And now, it's time for our story told by Peter Chand. The bird in the story is a cockerel or rooster, as those of you from the United States would call him. So, can you get ready with your cockadoodle-doos? Ready? Mouth open. Story jump out. Here's Peter. Surya, the sun god, was sharing his light with the world. A beautiful morning had turned into a beautiful afternoon. Oh, and the earth was so warm. And as the earth got warmer, well, the animals, especially the big animals, they started to complain. Because the elephant, he was saying these words, Garmi, Garmi, Garmi. Maybe you know that word, Garmi. Your parents or your carers, they might have a Garm Masala in their cupboard. Garm means hot, Masala means pepper. Garmi, Garmi, Garmi. Hot, hot, hot. And Surya was listening. A little while later, well, the camel was there going, Gormi, 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 Gormi. And he was complaining as he was foaming at the mouth. The rhino was the same, Gormi, 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 Gormi. So hot, all the animals were complaining. The next day, they complained again and again and again and again. And do you think Surya, the sun god, was happy? Of course he wasn't. He thought, I'm giving light, I'm giving heat to the world, and all these animals are doing is complaining. Garmi, garmi, garmi. 
So what did he do? One day, he refused to rise. He stayed asleep, snoring. Well, at first, the animals thought it was brilliant. All the big animals are going, this is so nice, it's very cool, it's very relaxing, it's just the kind of perfect temperature I want. But you know, as days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months, now they weren't so happy. Because now it was constantly cold, it was constantly dark. Animals were bumping into each other, they were falling down ditches. And that was just the big ones. For the little ones, it was even worse because they were being hunted by the bigger animals. And it was harder to see them coming in the dark, do you know? So one day the animals thought, OK, we've had enough. We've had enough of this cool weather now. We must go back up to Surya and ask him, ask him, please, please rise again. Please wake up. But of course, when they approached Surya, he says, no, you're the ones that were all complaining. You're the ones that saying it was too hot, that you were sweating. Well, now you can do without me. And he went back to sleep. And the world, the world was in an even worse situation than before. And I'll tell you who suffered the most. The birds. Because normally if it got cold, normally if the weather turned, well, they would fly to hotter climates. But now they didn't even have the sun to guide them, to tell them which way they had to go. It was getting worse and worse and worse. And the birds had a meeting. Who can we send? Who can we send to Surya and beg and beg, beg so he comes back and gives us light? Who's got a strong voice? Who's got good presence? Who is a fair bird? And all the birds agreed, the cockerel. So off the cockerel went. And he approached Surya and once again Surya said, no, I'm sorry, cockerel, he said. I'm not going to shine. And the cockerel said, please, Surya, you have to understand, we weren't complaining. The birds weren't complaining. It was those big animals, the elephants, the rhinos, the hippos, the camels, all those kind of big animals. Isn't it always the ones with the biggest voices that get all the attention? Isn't it the one with the biggest voices that always get heard? Nobody heard us. We're the voiceless ones. We're the ones that haven't got a voice. Please, we're begging you. Come back. Our life is abysmal. We're really suffering. We don't have a big voice like the other animals. And Surya, Surya, well, he understood and he felt sympathy for those birds. He says, very well, Cockerel. He says, you, 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 you fought a good case and tomorrow I will rise. Will you be there? And the Cockerel said, yes, of course I will. I'll be the first one there. And that's what happened. He went back and told the birds. And in the morning, after such a long time, after such a long period of darkness, of cold, of misery, Surya started to wake up and stretch. And as he stretched his arms, suddenly the light started appearing in that dark world. His fingers, well, they became rays. And suddenly the whole earth became warm, hot, bright and live again. And who was there but Cockerel? Can you help me with the loudest cock-a-doodle-doo? You ready? After three. One, two, three. Cock-a-doodle-doo! As he praised Surya. Life returned. Plants started to grow. Flowers began to bloom once more. And the animals, especially the smaller ones, they felt safer than they had done for such a long time. All thanks to Cockerel. And even to this very day, as you know, he's always there before all of the animals, ready to welcome Surya, the sun god, with the loudest cock a doodle doo that he has ever heard. Thank you, Peter, for that story. Did you join in with your cockadoodle do? In Punjabi, which is a language which Peter speaks, cockerels say kuk to kuk. And in Greek, it's kikiriku. And in Spanish, it's kikiriki. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Now, here's a reminder of our first ever world premiere Super Great Kids Stories live show. It's on Sunday, the 9th of October, 2022, at the Irish Cultural Centre in Hammersmith in London. You'll hear super great storytellers too, Kate Corkery and me, Kim, performing some of your favourite podcast stories, along with our Super Great Kids Stories band. Tickets are on sale now. That's the 9th of October, 2022, at the Irish Cultural Centre in Hammersmith in London. For more details, go to irishculturalcentre.co.uk and click on What's On and then on Info and Tickets. 
We can't wait to meet you. It's time now for me to dig deep into my bag of happies and say some thank yous. First, I'd like to say a very big thank you to all our subscribers. You're helping us to keep making this podcast. Hello, and thank you to new Patreon subscribers, Andrea, Everett, and Helena, who are from Eau Claire in Wisconsin in the US. And to Jess and her son, Buck, who is devouring our stories. And to Nico, who is seven, and Arabella, who is five, from Maine. Their favourite stories are Baba Yaga and Baboon and Turtle. If you're an Apple subscriber and would like a mention, do let us know. If you'd like to give a one-off donation of any amount on Ko-fi or subscribe to our podcast on Patreon and get to join our Owlets Club and get bonus stories, early access and ad-free, then go to our website on supergreatkidsstories.com and if you want to subscribe on Apple and also get access to the Owlets Club, go to subscribe in Apple Podcasts. And thank you to Puppy in the United States for a very cheery review, which put a spring in our step and a wag in our tail. Now, you've all been drawing and sending just splendid pictures of our stories to share on our Facebook page. So here's some thank yous to all you super great kids who sent in pictures recently. Thanks to eight-year-old Phoebe for a very carefully drawn picture of Baba Yaga and Vasilisa the Beautiful. Phoebe, I love your Baba Yaga with her long nose and claw-like hands. And your little black cat is beautifully drawn too. I wonder if you could tell this story to your brother Samson. And thanks to Dougie from Wanaka in New Zealand, who sent a picture which tells the story of a rainbow snake which lies in wait in the river and then jumps out and eats people who walk past. I love the detailed pattern on your snake, Dougie, and the fence which disappears into the distance. And thanks to Bo, who is six, from Toronto in Ontario. Bo has told the story of why the sky is far away in pictures. I love the grumpy-looking sky, Bo, as people throw bits of it into the rubbish bin and the people who are trying to reach it by standing on the table, and the birds who are stretching up to it with their long legs. Very witty. It's a fun story, isn't it? And Julian, who is 10 from Toronto in Ontario, has sent a beautiful imaginative picture of his version of Why the Sky is Far Away. It has wisps of wind and textured sky and the child floating past the window on a cloud, trying to reach the sky to get something to eat. Just lovely. So imaginative. Thank you very much for sharing this, Julian. And Oliver, who is six from Lombardia in Italy, has drawn a fabulous picture of Kibungu, the beast who wants a feast. Oliver, I love your beast's long arms and his sharp, pointy teeth and the way he's waving the jaguar around in his arms and trying to pop him into his sack. Thanks so much for sharing this. And Ophelia, who is four from Boise in Idaho, has drawn an imaginative picture of the lonely giant. Ophelia, what a beautiful picture. I particularly like the giant's long green blobby fingers and his red bows and his very sad face and eyes. Really good. Thanks for sharing this. And Tilda, who is five, has sent us a picture of one of her favourite stories, The Golden Bowl. Tilda, thank you. I love the way you've drawn the old king in his bed with the bowl next to him, which is making him feel better. Your picture has lots of energy. I like the way you've used all those colours. I like this story too, the way it tells us about kindness and the importance of our friends. And Aurora, who is five, and Eliana, who is seven, from Massachusetts, have sent some brilliant pictures of Water Mama and Baba Yaga, the Russian witch's hut. Aurora, I love Baba Yaga's hut, surrounded by a very carefully drawn fence with little skulls on top. And I like the way you've used more than one colour for the sky. Really good. 
and Toot will be very pleased to see a picture of Water Mama with her face to the sea as the sun goes down and her long black hair is flowing down towards her fishy tail. I can tell you've listened to the story really closely. Thank you. And Aaron, who is six from the United States, has sent us a lovely picture of one of his favourite giants, Paul Bunyan, who is a giant woodcutter. Aaron, I love the way Paul is holding his axe and he has his big boots on and a huge smile on his face and he looks ready to get chopping. Thank you for sharing this. And Maggie, who is six and on holiday in France, has drawn a bright picture of the rainbow snake from How the Birds Got Their Colours. I really like the colours you've used for the snake. They stand out. It's clever the way you've drawn the river running through the picture too. And I like all the neat labels which will help you if you decide to try and tell the story yourself. What a beautiful picture of a crocodile from Ramona, who is three, from Byron Bay in Australia. Ha! <laughs> Your crocky looks so cheeky. I'm glad you like the story of the crocodile in the school. He's a bit naughty, isn't he? I wonder if you can sing the little song which he sings. This little crocky wants some chalky. I wonder if you found the crocodile egg, what you'd do with it. Thanks very much for sharing this, Ramona. That's it for this week. If you'd like to see these pictures, they're all on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash supergreatkidsstories. Thanks to all our subscribers for making this episode possible. Keep making up your versions of these stories and telling them to anyone who will listen. If you're a subscriber, enjoy our new word searches and I'll see you soon. This podcast was produced at Wardour Studios in London. <laughs>